Hi guys, welcome to today's event. Today we're gonna to talk about coaching and never stop coaching. So uh, happy Friday to everyone. It's a beautiful sunny summer day here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And uh, today's topic is really about elevating behavior, performance, and contributions. So Jane and I are always, you know, kind of giving this piece of advice that if you want to become a great team, a great department, a great organization, you need to figure out how to elevate behavior, performance, and contribution. And so if you can elevate that in individuals, each individual is always elevating how they behave, how they perform, how they can contribute. If that's always going up and up and up, then what you have is that the entire team, the entire, entire department, the entire organization is moving up and up and up, right? So um, what are the tactics as a leader that allow us to be able to, you know, cause this impact that individuals, their behavior, their performance, and their contributions rise? Okay, so there's some leadership tactics that allow us to make this happen. Okay, so that's where our focus is today. So I'm going to break this down into two major tactics. Um, both are related to kind of feedback or direct dialogue, which uh, we talk about a lot. We teach this a lot. We have it available as an e-learning course in our Capstone EDU. We teach it in our summits. We wrote it in our book, The Employee Experience. I mean, this idea of giving feedback as a major tool to be able to elevate individual behavior, performance, and contribution. And so when we talk about coach and never stop coaching or this idea that as a leader, we can continually be giving feedback, giving coaching that allows people to, to rise in their behavior and performance is that you know we can take three main conversations, compliment, coaching, and correction. And we could use those three really you know, great conversation tactics and package them all as a you know coaching tactic to be able to improve, elevate individual behavior, performance, and contribution. So I'm going to show you kind of how to take that, put it into kind of two major ways to coach and never stop coaching. So the first one is taking the compliment and call out or correction conversation. And we talked about this before in previous events. And, and if you've ever been to our live trainings, you've heard us talk about this before, is that when we give feedback in the moment, so we see something happen, we hear something happen, we, you know, we've heard it enough to believe that it's true that an individual's behavior or performance is either at or above standard or below, we can give coaching or feedback in the moment. And um, and even if it's not like in the moment, you just didn't hear it in the, you know, you just didn't see it and then we respond right away or give feedback right away. Um, I like to say it's never too late to coach or give feedback. So, you know, maybe, you know, you witnessed something, it was, it was to standard or above standard and in the moment you didn't give feedback, but who says a day or two later, a week later, you can't give feedback and say, hey, you know, the other day, um, you know, I observed this, I saw this, I heard this. And so you can give feedback, you know, you know, more real time is great, but it, it, it's never too late sometimes. So if you take that compliment and call out, so if it's above standard, you compliment. If it's below standard, you call it out. Um, and there's three main points to that conversation. Number one is state what you observe or know to be true um, or have evidence of. So be very clear and specific about you know, what was done, what was seen, what was observed. And then number two, what's the impact of that? And number three is what standard does that connect to? And so if this is a compliment, then all of that's positive. What did you see? What did you hear? What do you know that's positive to standard or above standard? What's the impact when we behave or perform to standard? Uh, what standard is that you know, in compliance with or showing evidence of? So when you give that kind of coaching in the moment, 
you continue to elevate somebody's behavior or performance in that way. So they did it to standard or above standard, and now you're coaching them to reinforce that standard. And if you're using that same conversation, three-point conversation of what did you observe, what's the impact, what's the standard, and they were below standard, then you're coaching to standard, to bring them to standard, and that's you know real time in the moment. So as a leader, this is a huge coaching tactic, is to be able to do this compliment and call out or mini correction in the moment. And to make this successful, you know, you gotta really be an organization that is clear about your standards. So that's why we really recommend that behavior standards are in writing for, you know, preferably the entire organization. This is how we behave around here. Really understanding our job functions and how, you know, how standards are kept in how we do our work, whatever our job is. So making sure that those standards of how we behave and perform um, are really, really clear allows us as leaders to be able to coach to them, give compliments, and then call out when it's a below standard. One trick I like to do in positive coaching, even when I'm calling out somebody that maybe their behavior or their job task performance was below standard is, you know, once I say, you know, I observed this, um, this is the impact if the standard isn't met, this is the standard and why we have the standard, um, is then to say, what's getting in your way? You ask to turn it into a question and positive co conversation and coaching around, you know, what's getting in your way? What What's causing you to not meet the standard? Can we problem solve? Is it a system problem? Is it, you know, what is it? How can I help you succeed? Uh, what can we get at the reason for, for that? So, this is a great tactic to use, compliment, call out, and having these conversations about standards, upholding standards. And you wanna do the compliment three times more to every one criticism or call out to keep a positive relationship with the individual on your team so that they continually you know, are receptive and engaging in these kind of feedback conversations. And that's gonna be very important when we move into this next tactic, which is a little more formal and not on the spot in the moment kind of coaching is, you know, we can get a little more formal and should get a little more formal in elevating our, our team members, okay? Um, so just that day-to-day -day feedback and whatever is a very powerful tool, but when we move into more formal coaching, um, and conversations, um, those are, people are more receptive of those if those day-to-day -day feedback conversations and coaching and relationship go very, very well. And especially too is if it's paired with rounding, which is a whole nother topic of relationship development. But if you're giving this feedback in the moment and you're proactively rounding to build relationships with your employees, then when you move into a more formal kind of coaching and development of your individual team members, you're coming into that in a place and a relationship that is already more positive because you've been giving feedback in the moment three times more positive to every one time where you've had to call somebody out for not being at standard and also you've proactively been working on your your relationship with that individual getting to know that person what makes them tick etc so now let's talk about another tactic which is also direct dialogue which we label coaching and so um, giving feedback compliment and call out or correction is is a form of coaching but now let's talk about a real formal coaching positive coaching conversation that um, where we invest a little more time and energy into a specific coaching need or development need for an individual. So um, I really believe that, um, and we, we you know, talk about this aspect of it as well when we, we train or work with our part partner organizations on this is, you know, in organizations, if you can really develop um, something that's considered a value or spirit of continuous improvement, then when we approach coaching conversations that are a little more formal, where we're actually going to, you know, dive in and really put a little more time, energy, and focus on a certain development need that an individual team member may have to elevate their behavior, their performance, then people go into that already in a spirit of positiveness, right? So, um, if so, for instance, you know, if it's it's very much declared in the organization that we're a learning organization, 
that we're a high achieving organization that's on this journey to get better and better and better. And part of the spirit of that and value behind that is that we're, we're always going to be as individuals continually working to grow and develop. Okay, that we've never run out of opportunities as human beings and individuals on this team, no matter what our role is, to continue to get better and better. Okay, and so um, under this spirit of coaching or this value that this organization and all of its individuals are going to continually be getting better, then as a leader, when we engage in a positive coaching conversation, with one of our team members, then we're entering that under this, this spirit of this is positive. This isn't um, me saying to you, this is what's wrong with you and I'm gonna help you fix it. This is me saying to you as your leader that I care deeply about you, that I value you as a team member and I value you so much that I'm going to invest time and energy and focus in positive coaching. Okay, so when you enter it in that spirit, it's a whole different kind of uh, reception to the conversation. So, um, so in organizations, or even if you're a leader of a team, maybe your whole organization hasn't adopted that kind of spirit, but if you as an individual leader of a team of people wanted to kind of announce, you know, not surprise your team with it, but announce to your team is, you know, you know the, as a leader of this department, I really, you know, want to embrace this idea that individually and collectively we can always be getting better. And part of that is, is that I'm going to engage differently in positive coaching very specifically to each individual under this spirit of we're all going to grow and develop and that I'm going to take that seriously and I'm going to invest time, energy, and focus on you as individuals because as a, a team and individuals, we're all going to continue to get better. So uh, you can do that as an individual leader, but this is very, very powerful when it's done on a wide sweeping organizational level. So let's say now that you're in an organization or you're leading a department where you're going to engage in this kind of positive coaching and this idea of coach and never stop coaching. So under the spirit of this, um, there's also this idea of it being kind of continuous or like serial coaching. So the idea behind this would be this. Let's say you have 10 team members that work for you. And you're going to commit to positively coaching each one of them on one thing. Okay? So let's think about that. Picking one thing for each individual where you're going to commit to coaching them. Maybe it's a behavior that they're struggling with. You know, maybe it's a job task performance or an area of expertise that they're struggling with. Maybe they could be contributing more to a goal or an improvement or something like that in the, and they're not, uh, et cetera. But whatever that one thing is, that you're gonna figure out what that one thing is and commit to it and have that coaching conversation with them, okay? So the idea of it being kind of the coach and never stop coaching and that it's this under the spirit of always getting better and it's, it's serial in that I'm going to pick one thing at a time for each one of my team members and then I'm going to engage in more formal coaching, okay? So we can do the day-to-day -day coaching, which is to all standards of behavior and job text task performance, and then there's the specific, unique opportunities for each individual to, to be personally coached towards one thing that they can do to elevate their behavior or performance, okay? So um, the whole idea of this is that, you know, for instance, if, you're, if you have 10, 20, 50 employees, you can't commit to coaching two or three things right, for each of them. There just isn't enough time or energy for a leader and an employee to engage in that many improvements all at once. So the idea under this spirit of coaching is that at any one time we all have one thing that we are working towards to improve. And then once we master that one thing, we move on to the next and we move on to the next and we move on to the next. So um, 
in, um, I'm going to follow this up with a part two next week. What I'm going to do is share with you exactly how we go through this positive coaching conversation and how we set it up and how we pick the one thing. But today I just wanted to introduce this whole spirit of coaching, this idea of serial coaching, of prioritizing, picking one thing, and then committing under the spirit of coaching to coach and never stop coaching. So two major ways that leaders can use three conversations of direct dialogue, compliment, call out, um, which is two forms of feedback in the moment, and then positive formal coaching. And we're going to cover the outline for that conversation and how you initiate and engage in having that positive coaching conversation that will commit to elevating an individual's behavior and performance and get results. So um, thank you for your time today. I hope you've had a great week and that you've got some great plans for R&R for the weekend. And like I mentioned, next week I'm gonna follow this up with a live event on exactly how to carry out that that positive coaching conversation. Um, one thing I wanted to let folks know of too is that uh, we do have two live training events coming up in the Midwest. Uh, one is in Wisconsin and one is in Michigan coming up in October. And uh, for some of you, you've been to our summits or nursing boot camps before. Um, and you know, we get people who come again, they, they repeat, they come back again because they took so much in the first time, picked their two or three things they wanted to go and do with what they learned. And now they're ready to hear it again, decide what's next for them. Um, and so uh, maybe you've been before and maybe it's time you come back and see us again. And, and this is our seventh year of doing our Capstone Leadership Summits, and there is a Nursing Bundle Boot Camp pre-conference that's that's optional too. So you can choose how you want to you know attend this event. One day as a Nursing Bundle Boot Camp, two and a half days as a healthcare leader, or all three days of uh, three full days as a uh, a nursing leader attending both the Nursing Bundle Boot Camp pre-conference as well as the Leadership Summit. So check out the details of that on our website, capstoneleadership.net. And on there, there's you know a page for our training um, events, and you can see all the differences of where the locations are and the options for registering for that event coming up in Wisconsin and Michigan in October. And direct dialogue is uh, one of those topics that we cover live in that event. Uh, as well. But uh, as I mentioned next week, I'm going to share with you that coaching outline for positive coaching to more formally coach and really activate your spirit of coaching into some actions. So we'll see you then. Thanks so much.